The U.S. government truly believes the entire planet is its property. The Wall Street Journal has an article out titled, U.S. Aims to Thwart China's Plan for Atlantic Base in Africa, subtitled, An American Delegation Wants to Convince Equatorial Guinea Against Giving Beijing a Launch Pad in Waters the U.S. Considers Its Backyard. The article quotes the former U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs, Tibor Nagy, saying, quote, we'd really, really not like to see a Chinese facility on the Atlantic, and discusses, quote, American concern about China's global expansionism and its pursuit of a permanent military presence on waters the U.S. considers home turf. The Quincy Institute's Trita Parsi has discussed the irony of the Wall Street Journal yelling about China's global expansionism over a potential military base in Equatorial Guinea, without applying that label to the U.S., when the U.S. has hundreds of times the number of foreign military bases as China. Anti-war's Daniel Larison wrote an article back in December eviscerating the ridiculous claim that a military base some 6,000 nautical miles from the U.S. coastline could be reasonably framed as any kind of threat to the American people. But what really jumps out is the insane way the U.S. political media class routinely talks about virtually every location on this planet as though it is a territory of the United States. The Wall Street Journal referring to the entire Atlantic Ocean as America's backyard and waters the U.S. considers home turf follows a recent controversy over the U.S. president proclaiming that, quote, everything south of the Mexican border is America's front yard. This provoked many references to the so-called Monroe Doctrine, a 19th century imperialist assertion that Latin America is off-limits to anyone apart from the United States, effectively declaring the entire Western Hemisphere the property of Washington, D.C. It also follows another incident in which Press Secretary Jen Psaki remarked on the ongoing tensions around Ukraine that it is in America's interest to support, quote, our eastern flank countries, end quote which might come as a surprise to those who were taught in school that America's eastern flank was not eastern Europe, but the eastern coastline of the United States. The casual way these people say such things reflects a collectively held worldview that you won't find on any official document or in any school child's textbook, but which is nonetheless a firmly held perspective among all the drivers of the modern empire, that the entire world is the property of the U.S. government that the U.S. is not just the most powerful government in the world, but also its rightful ruler, in the same way Rome ruled the Christian world. It's not something they can come out and directly say, because admitting they see themselves as the rulers of the world would make them look tyrannical and megalomaniacal. But it's certainly something they believe. They're as obvious about it as could be. They make almost no effort to conceal it. And yet you'll still get empire apologists like Michael McFowl saying things like this. There was a time not long ago when imperial powers like UK, France, Portugal, etc. claimed their colonies as a sphere of influence. Thank God we didn't listen to them back then. So why now is it okay to let Russia exercise a sphere of influence over its former colony, Ukraine? McFowl knows very well that the U.S. is an imperial power, and that it demands a very large sphere of influence. Would you like to see a picture of America's sphere of influence? Here you go. And it's a picture of the planet Earth. To live in the Western world is to be constantly inundated with made-up stories about tyrants who want to terrorize the world, while living under a globe-spanning power structure that is actually terrorizing the world. It's just so bizarre watching these imperial spinmeisters try to frame nations like China and Russia as freakish and backwards while working to literally rule the world like a comic book supervillain. The U.S. centralized empire is quantifiably the single most destructive and evil power structure in today's world. We shouldn't want anyone to rule over the entire planet with an iron fist. But these monsters are the very least qualified among us to do so.